This video is probably going to change your web design workflow using Divi. But before I show you the secret, I would like to remind you that if you purchase Divi using my affiliate link, I will give you access to my web design formula course, a course that teaches you how to design professional looking websites with Divi. And also if you're brand new to web design, I have a link to a free course. All right, so let's get started here by creating a brand new page. So I'm just gonna hover over here and click on add new. Okay, let's give this page a name. So I'm just gonna call this Mac and then click on Divi Builder. So you can use any name you want for, I mean, for the page, it doesn't really matter. So what I'm going to do now is to just add a basic structure here. So we need to build this from scratch. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And we are going to start with uh, say two columns. So in the first column here, we're going to add a text module. So I'm gonna search for it and select it. So as you can see here by default, this is the text or the font that comes with it. But every single time that you add a text module, this is what's going to happen. And the same thing applies if we add a button here. So the default button here looks like this. I'm gonna search for it and select it. So what happens is every single time you design your website, you need to go in and customize that button. But what I'm going to show you now is a game changer. I don't even know why uh, Elegant Themes does not talk about this. Anyway, let me show you how it works. So I wanna go back into my text module here. So let's say I've chosen a specific font for this. I'm gonna come over here to design text and I'm gonna go in and choose Poppins as my font. There we go, I'm gonna select it. And I also need to make further adjustments here. So I'm gonna go to my text size. I'm gonna set this to 1.2 EM. And for the line height, I'm gonna set this to say 1.8. So this is how I want my font to be. So what I'm going to do next is really exciting. I'm gonna right click and then say, apply styles to active preset. So if I do that and say yes, what's going to happen now is every single time I choose um, some text to add on my website, it's going to have this particular setting. How cool is that? So let's prove that this actually works. I'm gonna save that. Now let's get rid of this, delete that, okay? Now let's add our text module. I'm gonna select it and just like that, my font now is going to be consistent throughout the whole website. Very, very cool. Now, not only does this end here. Now let me show you what we can also do here with the button. So I'm gonna go in, click on this gear icon to go into my button settings. Next, I'm gonna come over here to design, click on button and then activate use custom styles for button. So this is where I can go in and make all my changes. So for my button text size, I'm gonna set this to 1 EM. I'm also going to change my, in fact, let's make it 1.2. That's a bit too small. There we go, so that's much better. Next, I'm gonna go in and add my button text color. Let's make it white. And then for my button background color, we're gonna use this blue and finally, Let's add some, uh, in fact, let's remove the border width and the border radius. Let's add a bit of letter spacing. Now on the font here, let's keep things consistent. We are going to use Poppins. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And I'm gonna make it all caps. Now you can see here inside the button there, there isn't enough breathing space. So let's head over here to, but before we do that, let's just remove my, uh, hover state here. So we're gonna go to spacing and let's start with uh, 2% top and bottom and then 4% left and right. Okay, there we go. So in fact, you know what? Let's increase this a bit more. Let's go with 6%, but I'm not really a fan of um, this icon on hover. So let's go ahead and disable it. So I'm gonna go back to my button here and I'm gonna look for show button icon and disable it. But what I'd rather have is when I hover over here, I want the color to change. Now, bear with me here. I know I'm going through so many steps, but this is just to show you that if I design this button, this is going to be my default button throughout the whole website. Okay, so let's look for our button background color. Click on this little icon, and this is where I want to add my hover color. So I'm gonna go in and let's make it lighter like that. All right, so I'm happy with this button now. So if I want this to be my default button, I'm gonna right click, apply styles to active preset. I'm gonna select that, say yes. Okay, now let's save. Now here's what happens. If I need to add a button, 
at any point while I'm designing this on my website, all I have to do is to search for my button module. And here it is. There we go. So you can see here, it's taken on my style. Okay, so let's say at some point, maybe the company you're designing this website for uh, decides to rebrand and they say to you, look, the blue is not part of our color palette anymore. We need to change the color. All you have to do is to repeat this step after you've made changes to the button. Let me show you. Now you notice that we have these two buttons here. I can go into any of these buttons here and make the change. So let's go in. I'm gonna go to design button and let's change this to red. All right, so let's say this now is our new uh, color. All I have to do is to right click and say, apply styles to active preset. Now notice what happens to the other button there. If I say yes, it's changed. So I can do this with fonts. So let's say uh, the font here on my website has also changed. I can also do the same thing. But let's continue on so I can show you that you can actually do this with so many modules. So I'm gonna delete that. So this time, let's add a testimonial module. Go ahead and select it. Now this has a bit of work because first of all, I don't like the, uh, the quote here on the top, so I'm gonna disable it. Go to my background, add a background color. So let's make it dark gray, 21, 21, 21. Okay, that works great. Now my text here needs to change as well. I wanna set this to Poppins. There we go, I'm gonna select that, change my size. So this time it's gonna be one EM, add my line height. The color, yeah, I think we might need to change the color there. So let's go with a lighter gray so it's easier for us to read. Okay, and then the name here, let's make it all caps and let's add a little bit of a letter spacing. There we go. So that's gonna be my testimonials but remember, we have to come over here to the top, right click and say apply styles to active preset. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and click on yes. All right, so that's looking great now. So every time I add a testimonial, that's what it's gonna look like. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna add these three columns and now I can go in and search for testimonial. There we go. So you can see the color is pretty much similar to what I had over there. If I duplicate this twice, drag this over to the right here, drag the other one, it's easier now for me to go in and add my image. All I have to do is to click on the uh, settings, go to image, and then this is where I would add my image. Now, at the moment, I don't have any images in the media library, but if you did, this is how you would add your image. So you're probably thinking, okay, this is what we're doing with the modules. Now, what happens if you want to apply the same thing to let's say rows or even um, sections? So let me show you. Now, by default, the spacing we have here is not great on the sections and this is something that I go in and change every single time. So what I can do here is I can go into my section settings. I go to design, spacing. So I normally use 8% for my padding. There we go. So 8% to the top, 8% to the bottom. Now, as soon as I've done that, I can now right click and say, apply styles to active preset. So this now is also working on sections. It's really, really cool. I'm gonna save that. So now you can see we have 8% on the top, 8% on the bottom. So this time, if I need to add a regular section, notice what happens. So let's say I'm adding all my content here. Let me just add, Let's add some text. There we go. Right, so I've added some text. Now I can't really see where it separates, but I'm gonna add a bit of color here to my background. So I'm gonna go in and add a very slight gray. So let's go up here so you can see how I'm working on this. Okay, great. So now you notice that my 8% has been applied because this has become my default. So I can continue on and start adding all my content here. So let's say on the left here, it's going to be another text module. I can do that. And let's say on the right here, I need to add an image. So I'm just doing this to uh, balance my design here. Okay, great. So now you can see that everything is consistent. This is 8%, this is 8% as well. And now all my sections are looking great. 
Now there's also something that I do on my uh, rows. So let me go in and make that change. I'm gonna come over here to design uh, sizing. So normally for my maximum width here, I use percentage. So if I set this to 80% and what else do I do here? Equalize column heights. And I also use a gutter, gutter width <laughs> of two. Okay, so the gutter width is the space between the columns. Now, sometimes I go with 70. It just depends on uh, the type of website I'm building. So for this one here, let's say, let's go with 70 for both. How about that? Okay, so let's say this is the standard. So what I would then do is I'll right click here and say, apply styles to active preset. If I say yes, did you notice that there was a slight change on the bottom here? That's because this was my uh, rows being updated. And now you can see that everything has been updated. Even here at the bottom, if I, if I go in and take a look at my design, yeah, I can see here the default is 70%. So as you can see, just with a few clicks, I was able to go in and do my standard settings. Now, if you are going to uh, design every single module, uh, each time you add it onto the page, this is going to add extra hours to your design workflow. This is the best way to design your websites. Let me know what you guys think. Do you use this technique to design your websites using Divi? Uh, if you do, please let me know in the comments box below. If this is your first time seeing this, also let me know in the comments box below. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification. Until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.